Okay, so I had this download the other day, and I wanted to share it with you guys and see if it resonates. So I live in the Seattle area, and there's a lot of homelessness here. Um, you'll be driving down the interstate, and there's just like homeless encampments, like on like the side of the freeway and like underneath overpasses. And it's a huge, I don't know what the word is, point of contention between citizens and like politicians and city people, whoever. And it's like such a big deal out here. And I was just thinking about how it's so visible, right? Like the homeless population here, it's like a lot of it, to be fair, is um, people who are struggling with addiction. And um, it's like, you know, they have discovered the way in which they can function, I suppose that's the right word, and still be able to participate in their vice of choice, right? Um, and that involves like ca camping, I guess is the right word, like the tents and, and like their, their, the encampments, I don't know another word to use for it. Um, and to be able to, to still like, you know, have a roof over their head and like eat ish, you know, panhandling or whatever anyway. And, um, I was just thinking about how visible it's becoming <clears throat> and <clears throat> I couldn't help, but think about the reason for that. Like why is addiction, mental health issues, homelessness, but, but truly a lot of this is addiction and life choices, right? Why is that becoming so visible during this like time of ascension, right? As humans are trying to raise their consciousness, what is it that leads to something like homeless encampments being pushed out? It's like almost from like the little tiny pockets here and there to like humongous encampments that you cannot miss. And I'm, I realized that the collective of addiction can no longer hide behind closed doors. So many people who, so everybody has um, a social network, right? Even if it's very small and very limited, most people have a family, they have friends, they have roommates, they have like people in close proximity to them, right? And when they fall into addiction, they require others to enable their behavior so that they can continue that lifestyle, right? So for someone in a romantic partnership, they require that that person put up with their behavior and help keep a roof over their head, food in their belly, perhaps access to money to, to buy their, you know, drug or alcohol or whatever. Um, or it's like, parents to facilitate that same like enabled behavior or sometimes a, older adults uh, parents will live with children right or, or roommates or friends right they're they require this energy that helps them uh stay within the energy of addiction like they have to be able to uh have the means to continue their addiction, right? And so as we continue to heal and to ascend and to raise our vibration, many people are choosing to no longer enable that behavior. Many people who were who suffered with addiction are choosing to not be addicted anymore. They're getting clean, they're getting the help that they need, right? I've seen many clients in my quantum healing business who have suffered from decades long struggles with alcohol or drugs. Like I have had clients that had used crack cocaine. They were into meth. They were alcoholics for many years and they got clean and they're on their awakening path. Now they're healing. Um, and a lot of people are doing that same thing, that healing. And so they can no longer support the energy of addiction, that low vibration, um, the, the toxicity of the entire lifestyle of um, needing drugs, alcohol, substances, basically, to um, function, right? And so what's happening is that those people and the collective, the energy of addiction is getting pushed out from behind closed doors. People are, are no longer able to continue managing that at home in private because their enablers, for lack of a better term, are no longer enabling it.
they're doing their healing and they're wanting to move up. And as they increase their own frequency and their own vibration, then they can't tolerate that lower frequency and vibration, which isn't a bad thing. It's not bad and it's not wrong to be an alcoholic or to be addicted to drugs. It just is. It is a lower vibration and it's not bad. It just is. That's the path that they've chosen. Um, and those two paths, when they don't align anymore, um, they have to find somewhere else to be so that they can continue to coexist within that energy and within the vibration of addiction. And so it's getting pushed out. It's not as easy for people anymore in a lot of ways. This is not across the board, but for, for a lot of people in general, it's not as easy to maintain their own addictions because others are no longer willing to support it. And so they are doing things like living in encampments that are visible and easy for the rest of us to see. And so we're forced to look at it and to make a decision about our own thoughts, our own opinions about addiction and homelessness and things of that nature. And so we, as with all other things, are given an opportunity to decide how we want to react to that consciousness of addiction and homelessness. Some people look at it and they think, they should have made better choices. They could all be out working. They could get a job. They're all losers. They're ruining society, right? But there are others that look at that and they, they think that's really tough. They must really be struggling. That's a hard life. That's a hard life to put your, all of your energetic contentment for lack of a better phrase in <clears throat> something so outside of yourself like alcohol or drugs. God, that's so hard, but it's their path and they've chosen it. And the darkness that is inherent within the collective of addiction or homelessness can be, it can be beautiful and meaningful if I choose to look at it that way, they are reminding me of the fact that free will and autonomy exists in this world. And they're, they're choosing, they have chosen in this lifetime to go down that path. And that's, that's their path. Who am I to say that that's the wrong path or a bad path? I don't know. It's just not mine. It's theirs. And when I look at it, I, conclude that I wouldn't want to live outside all the time or on the side of the freeway or in a tent or whatever, panhandling or, or doing other things to get money just to feed this habit that I have. Right. And so I can look at that with love and compassion for them and the journey they're on and also be thankful and grateful for what I have in my life. I have a network of people who love and support me and I'm able to go to work every day and I have a clean, tidy, sanitary place to live. It really is kind of the epitome of the Ascension experience. It's an opportunity for not only those who are in it and experiencing it, either as an enabler or a former enabler or an addict or a former addict, right? The ones that are directly participating in it, but also for those who are observing it. Am I going to choose when I see this consciousness to send loving and compassionate energy to them? Or am I going to choose to channel triggered, angry, resentful, fearful energy within myself and towards them? It's all just a choice. And it's becoming so, so much more visible and so much easier for us to see because we're being asked to look at these things. The duality in everything is starting to come more to the surface. And it's opportunity after opportunity for us to exercise our own free will to either live in love or to live in fear.